so uh, uh, this is a talk about uh, uh, the data viewer in the wireless sensor networks where uh, the sensors go to sleep uh, from time to time in terms of the literature around the same energy. The work is actually done by the uh, three students. I'm uh, just uh, coming here to uh, do a presentation. Every time I talk something, Lectures, I always start by saying why. When you do a piece of work, you want to know why you do this piece of work, or what do you contribute uh, to the existing <coughs> literature. The same thing is true for uh, this paper. Why do we do this? Why is such uh, networks with sleeping modes? This is not a new problem. It's been done many times. I'm pretty sure if you Google, uh, you can find maybe hundreds of papers on the topic. Uh, so, why we are doing this again? Uh, we do it for a very different purpose. Uh, this is to see how we can uh, further advance uh, the certain part of the NGN research. Uh, NGN, uh, being a data centric architecture, is a transport service, will be fundamentally different from what we have today. Uh, we have we have had the TCP for many, many, many years. Now, Google is pushing for a uh, quick, quick uh, UDP internet connection. That's what they have. But nevertheless, uh, despite the fact that quick is on UDP, the C stands for connection. So for NBN, it's a data centric, it doesn't have a connection. Now, what kind of transport service uh, we would need? So over since 2010, this many years, we've been working on the and the people identified the data set synchronization. It's the desired transport services by the applications that we have previous. So uh, we identified that as the new transport function for the end. And as such, uh, a number of different sync protocols have been tried. Um, the very first one, the kernel sync, I'll go see it right there. You can use one, it's the ILX. <laughs> and uh, then uh, followed by ISIM, uh, the ISIM used the uh, reverse room filters. And then followed by ROMSIM, which are the region of kernel sync, and followed by PSIM, which is somehow derived uh, out of ISIM. Then after all of this, uh, last year, with Kao Shang and other students of the UCLA, provided the back listing. But all of these protocols, they are robust, resilient, can recover from uh, not only packed losses, but also uh, partitions, uh, like the commerce specifically designed for partitions. Nevertheless, there is a hidden design assumption that is, the nodes of ISO failed uh, or partitioned. Otherwise, it's not connected. So, you know, the, the, the packet exchanges, assuming that if I send uh, a single interest to the group, hopefully uh, everyone gets it uh, in the absence of packet losses. So, and therefore, there's not explicit um, focus of the design of any of them. In the environment where partition uh, of the delayed current networking should be considered as a norm rather than exception that you have to do uh, recovery out of it. So that's what this paper is called. Uh, we pick the sleeping nodes, the sleeping sensors as a case study because they are the easiest uh, a scenario that can create some kind of a disconnect. Uh, not go sleep, but they are offline, and the other ones are still online, and they change uh, in turn go sleep. So to create, the, I think, the simplest asynchronous environment. Uh, the can assume that hopefully by big chunks, all uh, the nodes uh, can hear you at any given time. That assumption is coming. <laughs> you know, this is a trick, but I hope everyone learned by right now. Uh, when you start doing something new, slow start. To, to pick up some uh, scenario that's the simplest to, uh, to play with and easiest to understand. 
So the student has to pick up the same because they all have rooms and uh, yeah, all the building have water now. And some sensors in each room, the adjacent sensors, adjacent rooms so we have sensors here in each other. So that if you think each room creates this kind of synchronization group, then uh, you have multiple synchronization groups so you can pass information along. And eventually, you have some data collected for the building, you know, energy consumption, temperatures, and you can collect those data periodically. Uh, so that's a very simple scenario. Uh, we, then we focus on in one room, uh, how you can synchronize uh, the sensors when not all of them are run at any given time. The approach, like I already hinted, that we want to use uh, uh, so the data set the synchronization approach by two years ago. Uh, the, uh, the awake sensors, if they can collect all the data from the sleeping sensors, then uh, when collectors send the data collection request, then it can uh, extract out all the data produced, not only by the current awake sensors, but also by the data produced from previous uh, sleeping sensors. So the idea is that when the, the sensor, before they go sleep, they should pump all their you know, data samples out. And uh, whoever is still alive, uh, pick it up. Uh, when, when there's a awake sensor is going to sleep before the data collection request comes, then you should make sure that your data gets dumped to others before it goes to sleep. So where's the point here? Uh, second point, how do you do uh, in the set of synchronization. I mentioned before, uh, there have been a few trials. Um, I, I had a one day to make a slide, didn't get enough chance to go for the first one. That's very finished. <coughs> what I meant to say that uh, if you use my uh, earlier example here, the kernel sync and the ground sync, uh, they try to communicate about hey, here's my current data set state in a, in a simple way. That is a computer hash, so it's representing the data set state. Um, yeah, that has some challenges. So I think and TSYNC decided they want to do a smarter uh, data set state uh, compression. Instead of just doing simple hash, they use the inverse group filter. But nevertheless, they all assume that there's some shared state among the, the nodes that that is a synchronization group. So that if I give you a digest, the, the hash of my state, otherwise I give you the bloom filter, the worst bloom filter at the end. Uh, from there, then you can derive what data I have or what data I don't have, uh, the way to synchronize that. Uh, this is shared state assumption. is uh, too heavy one for, for the uh, for the situations where uh, you know constant data losses, this uh, is that. So what they think decided after the students of our survey for the previous work and decided that we're going to take a completely different approach. Forget the compression of data set state. Forget the idea. Let's do brute force synchronization. You know what I, I as a node try to synchronize with. My neighbor knows. Uh, what I'm going to say is straightforward. This is uh, the, the latest series number. I understand for everyone is with the five uh, founders in the synchronization group. Uh, this is my understanding of your latest series number. I just send this to you. Okay. If your your state is different from mine, then then we should have to say who has the later number, uh, who is missing the, the previous data, etc. This gets around the problem that if I don't know your precise data production state, I just send you a digest. Your digest is different from mine, and I have no clue what color it is. This, you receive this vector, you know exactly what the difference is. But uh, this vector has one problem that is, it's just the numbers. I did some numbers and find for the vector. Uh, so, therefore, you have to know which number is for which producer. So therefore, I have to think uh, to develop a pretty elegant uh, group management uh, scheme uh, 
itself, uh, you lack the, a group manager that actually controls. So if here is the order of all the producers, then when, when you try to synchronize, you just uh, uh, set up the, uh, the list of numbers. And this is a grid. This in company one step. It is not so great um, in the asynchronous environment because in the asynchronous environment, if you say, hey, everyone agree on the group membership and then the order, you have six members in the group and here's the order. If not, not the, no, if not all the nodes uh, can be online at the same time, you cannot even achieve that agreement. So, therefore, the fact that sync is great, it doesn't work. In the, is the asynchronous communication environment. Mm -hmm. uh, this new stuff, we call it DSSN, it is said the same thing with the sticky nose uh, as a trivial, not just simple, as a trivial change uh, from the back of It says that, okay, given that we don't have opportunities to synchronize the app, uh, the membership, okay, that, why don't we, in communication, just put explicit producer name in front of the sequence member? And this will remove any need to uh, agree upon what is the order of those factors. Instead, I tell you, each member of, the, of whichever the producer uh, is involved. So therefore, in the DSSN, um, so this is with the things, like uh, they use this um, uh, classroom uh, sensing data uh, example to say, you can see this. It's a UCLA voter how 4809, that's an uh, Alex previous office. And there's a, um, and the different sensors, you know, the sensor A, sensor B, sensor D, what kind of data they produce. And uh, it's a that trivial, trivial stuff. Uh, so I mentioned already, we want to look the slow start. Uh, the, um, and therefore, I'll pick the simplest room. Uh, originally, uh, for the plan for the paper was uh, we're actually going to build uh, like a, a center network for the building. We first saw the problem of uh, how you sync up with some one group among multiple sensors. Then we talk about how the adjacent groups can help communicate the data uh, across the group boundaries. And eventually, you have the same network uh, that will get data collected to. Uh, Little factor somewhere, you know, by the I think that's in the second uh, floor of the building. Uh, it manages the, the, the facilities, but uh, we didn't get that wrong. Uh, by the time the development count came, we only finished uh, simulating the one room situation. But then we feel that we have learned enough, uh, and we got this uh, paper pushed out. In the one room, we assumed like in this room. You have five sensors in one uh, Wi-Fi hub. Everyone can reach everyone else. It's very trivial. Um, and uh, the, uh, the grid group. So in such a trivial environment, there's only two new problems you have to, uh, you have to worry. One is how you can minimize energy consumption. That means transmit that's a few packets of problem and uh, still get your job accomplished. And the second is you reduce the to minimize the collisions because now there's a one half Wi Fi broadcast. Uh, direct no, no communication without this AP in the middle. Uh, so, how can you reduce collision? That in turn also impact the number of packets uh, you have to transmit because in the field you have to transmit again. <coughs> so, minimize energy consumption. Um, we are uh, Pick the one thing that's really application specific and it cannot be replicated in other places, which is you just want to get the data out of the node going to sleep. So the sleeping node knows that, oh, my schedule for the time, I should go to bed now. Uh, I should turn off the energy now. So therefore, uh, you just tell other people, hey, who can pick up my, my data? Then you let other people pick your data, then you uh, go sleep. So you do not, every time you do, since the temperature generates piece of data, you say, hey, everybody, I got a new piece of data. That will produce more packets. If you just uh, say, I sync up um, for each of my sleeping cycle, that's, that's the minimum you must do. 
the second thing is to reduce the number of data to reduce the type of transmissions. Uh, you want to uh, utilize broadcasts. Given that our goal is for all the sensors uh, collect all the data, so no matter who uh, has been in sleeping mode, the alert, the weak ones, can have very robust data. And the wireless broadcast really help you uh, to get the data. You don't have to answer the data yourself. Instead, if some other knows to say, hey, I miss this piece of, piece of data, uh, please send. And then you can just, you know, the bystander, you strong and you find the data. And then, uh, again, I mentioned uh, we have to figure out a way to minimize the limitations. This figure is from the paper. It's not exactly clear. So what I've tried to do is I put a number on that. Uh, so think about the node A is about uh, node B come to sleep. A is send out the synchronization message, basically send out State back today. This is the secret number, as far as I know, that also includes its own uh, new need to produce the data secret number. You can see that at least there, uh, B is a state uh, as well. When this interest goes off, uh, so, so the nodes receive the interest by any definition to send out the uh, data packet. So those nodes uh, send data packet, this is number two. Uh, the data packet serves as an acknowledgement, and uh, so that even tells the node B someone hear about it. Uh, so if the whoever hears about B's notification, and uh, but doesn't doesn't retrieve data from B, that really means that whoever sent the act already gets all the data that the act. So there's nothing needs to be done. So it's the acknowledgement uh, also is necessary and important. Not only that, the acknowledgement, if you have two nodes sending the um, acknowledgement, uh, they get merged, but no problem. Um, that if anyone wants to have data, the acknowledgement will only tell us the sending of the interest. Someone got this interest. And if you want to have data, then you actually uh, look into your uh, state vector with your received state vector. The node B, yeah, and see if we need the, uh, to retrieve data. If you try to retrieve the same data, again, the, the interest uh, can be merged. In the wired environment, you were thinking that the, the, in the middle, maybe the router receives two interest uh, aggregated, you can only follow one. But then it's a wireless uh, one half broadcast. Uh, that's not what happened. Essentially, you have to create a little random timer before you send out the interest. Um, say that A sent out the interest of person, um, and then uh, uh, C playing a random camera game because it came out yet, so he hears the interest. He doesn't understand it, so it is suppressed. Uh, but it has the same effect as the interest aggregation in the wired outer phase environment. You hear others' interest or sending else, you still put uh, your interest in the in the feed and then we can get the data to come back. And then eventually put them back there that uh, you will send this data. So in the previous example we say B is the node who's gonna go to sleep. That's why we call the sync initializer and it should be node A and the sync not seven. The key uh, so that they are the same responders. Um, so if uh, A or C or A and C get all the data from B and they can tell B, oh, we get all your data and we can simply go to sleep, understanding someone who cares data uh, if the collection requires the counts. For the uh, collision avoidance, um, you know, there's only one multicast uh, in the Wi-Fi group, so the goal is to say we only have one interest data exchange going on at any given time. This is just one way to uh, minimize collisions. And there are two timers. Uh, why is the delay timer? This is you know, very much like the, the CSMA CA, that is uh, collision avoidance. You create a random timer before you transmit it. 
that reduces the chance of collisions. This is important. The microwave data loads. Interesting, I guess. I didn't want to transmit all the, yeah, the little time bar and sense the channel, uh, minimize the collision. Then uh, the, the wait time bar. That's really the interest uh, transmission time bar. When you send the interest, you wait to see when the data comes back. If the data doesn't come back, you need to retransmit the interest. That's a new size. Consumer responsible for reliable data delivery. Uh, so, this is the, the use of uh, the wait timers and delay timers. And the, the, together, with when you receive a packet, when you receive the interest and receive the data, so here give you a little explanation. Every time you receive a packet, no matter what that is, you instantly stop your timers, uh, both of them. Then you see, hey, what the hell now? If you got the uh, interest, um, and I, if I have to receive the interest, I got data, I'm going to schedule a delay timer to supply the data. Uh, why schedule a delay timer? Because other people might also have the same data, they could also uh, transmit this. This delay timer, the randomization will minimize the collisions. And uh, if I receive the interest and I don't have the data. What does that mean? That means that I also want the data. Uh, because we want the photo sensors to replicate and everyone else's data. So then you literally just put this received interest back into your kind of interest table and wait for the data to come. So that's why you select the, the wait time. Uh, and then you trust your interest. And uh, if you have to receive the time, uh, in the data. Um, so you say, did I ask for this data? You go look for your pick. Uh, then uh, uh, it's better if you find the metric. But even if you don't find the metric, uh, as long as it's a part of your data collection on the same data, on the same data set next week, you may also decide to take it. Uh, and, uh, because you you uh, you may have some timer uh, scheduled before we just cancel it on your super interest. Then uh, you you probably have some other things you want to ask. Then you you set a daily timer or whatever the next step. Then you want to ask. If you don't have anything to ask, then you can take this step. So here are just some numbers uh, to say that. With the limited time, we played with uh, different TV timers and uh, different uh, uh, wait timers, and just show that they don't have wait time. Uh, the delay timer, just remind you, is a random timer to schedule for what you send any effect on. So it says that if you change the delay timer by a factor of 20, uh, you reduce the uh, collision rate by a factor of 20. More than and uh, the interest suppression um, because we play the delay timer, you have interest, other people have interest. Like uh, I showed here, you know, when you receive something, everyone wants to send the, the, the um, but uh, you hear because of delay timer, they're not sending out at the same time. You hear from others, you suppress yourself. So uh, that seems to be a But I want to say that um, don't take this value on, on, the, on, the, on the face value. Okay, this is nothing but some kind of a, uh, proof of evidence that is, you can effectively uh, reduce the collisions. This, by no means, they are the best value, the right value, optimized, nothing. It's a good force of an error, purely to say, oh, we can do at least this one. So don't take the case value on it. Different from the first speaker, I think it did a great job having the lab demonstrations and also learn more about that in the break. Maybe you get your code as well. I like the drawing book. But uh, I, I'm not going to talk about the simulation result. I think that's the worst of time. Let's have something on parallel. Why is that? Um, you can see that even in the asynchronous uh, world, like the sleeping sensors, and the other asynchronous world would include like a vehicle networking. You are not 
is interconnected, you will know you made the physical physical to apply this map and then connect it again. Um, others information about the disaster recovery from other situations. It just said if you it's on the protocol of not the actual mentioned the right? It's so constant. My point is that if you design a protocol that can work in asynchronous environment, it will really work in a synchronous environment. Um, and so we just learned that you can make data set synchronization in an asynchronous environment if your single protocol doesn't assume state um, from the other nodes. The uh, wireless communication, uh, I think this is the something we at least the, the, my group has done from the wall. It's about the first time it was late visit. I think it showed us the wireless environment is both the opportunity to explore um, and also challenge um, opportunities because it's broadcast in nature. Multiple nodes can get data simultaneously. And then every coin has two sides. So you broadcast, and you have a chance of collision. Uh, exactly how to minimize collisions, I think that that's still remains. As an open issue. I, uh, in the very last minute, I was sitting there, I was thinking about what I should add this for. Uh, do I still have time? Yes. <laughs> then I'll skip it. I mean, have five minutes. <laughs> I have five minutes? Okay. Just to be the, uh, for the fun, 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 fun. So uh, I said the bonus point, uh, I, will, I meant to trigger some discussion. I remember, I tried to. I got the exact wording from the reviews, but I couldn't find it in my laptop. So I remember some reviewers said that uh, how does this work different from you just run everything on UDP? Yeah, the UDP over a Tango Wi Fi would do exactly the same thing. So, what's new or why you need it? I said the bonus point. Well, I'm so sorry, I turned on my. Uh, uh, lecture about uh, well, uh, yeah. well, the point for the audience if anybody can answer this question. <laughs> Maybe that's not the right mode of uh, uh, <coughs> operation in this uh, environment. Uh, let me just spell it out. Hey guys, when you say you run UDP, what does UDP do? Nothing. Zero. All UDP says is that, that you can send a packet without setting up a connection for example. And that's what UDP is. Uh, what's if you make a single run on top of UDP? It's not so much UDP per se. You could run on top of the Wi Fi. Uh, for that matter, you can run on top of the Java Wi Fi if, if your system allows you to do so. The point is that this packet has to carry something that, that carries the application semantics. So the receiving nodes. Uh, can understand what to, to do with it. When you say, why can't you do all of this running on top of UDP? You didn't mean UDP. You actually meant to say, maybe it's HTTP on top of UDP. Because the HTTP, that URL, carries the name of the contents that inform the receiving node uh, what to do with it, what this content is about. But if you do that, then you turn every node into this high-level application node. Notice, what we're having here is still transport. The transport is independent from the applications. All we can understand is this is called the rule of transport protocol. So the sensor node, yes, they are, they are transporting all this sensing information. They can also transport other information. Uh, you know, uh, what, what other information maybe? I don't know. Um, Sensor cannot transmit the streaming. Uh, but like alarm information or anything else. Uh, that the same transport protocol we do, it doesn't really know or understand your applications. Okay, that's, that's the essence of the end. Bringing down the, the, the names into the network layer so you can deliver the packet. Um, UDP is useless because the UDP has no information. All it has is the phone numbers. 
to do the optimize and instead of an auto say which process you should should uh, uh, handle this project. Yeah. That's, that's okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, a uh, couple of questions. I mean, this, this, but, uh, when you say wireless and broadcast, uh, is this uh, combined in the sense, uh, can they be wireless without broadcast, maybe peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, is that model work also, um, or are you looking at that as well? Peer-to-peer. Peer-to-peer is a physical connectivity. Right, a point-to-point wireless. Uh, this is it. Wireless is broadcast. When you turn that into point to point, you substantially reduce its scalability. Uh, if people are interested, I would point you to a keynote given by Van Jacobson exactly two years ago at the workshop uh, list uh, that I see uh, posted. And he started by looking about years back, he tried to play with. Siemens or somewhere, so fancy the room decorations. And here, the big room, he bought lots of those and those lights. And he looked at the menu. The menu said, Sorry, you take out the menu, you know, the lights. The maximum was at eight. <coughs> Why is that eight? Because they do point to point control of each light. And so that they run out of time after they hit the eight. So you have to go back to the first round. Um, and the agent is amazing that they said, how does this make sense? You turn the broadcast media to point point communication, and then you limit the scalability. And this this story I have occurred too many times from people in the battlefield. Uh, I think it's IP's fault. IP is a point point communication. And everyone thought we just need to support support ID. So they convert all the multicast media to support only point one. Yeah, yeah. All right. Then thank you very much. <laughs>